Second substitute House Bill 1325 on third reading and final passage remarks. The good member from the 5th District, Representative Callan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm honored to move forward this legislation with a good lady from the 39th who serves with me on the Children, Youth, Behavioral Health Work Group. There were elements that um, the recommendations that came from the Children, Youth, Behavioral Health Group had top priorities. And this is one of the, the highest priorities of the work group. The work group is, is made up of over five subgroups and over 200 stakeholders. And this legislation brings forward three elements that are critical to the behavioral health needs of our youth. First, Madam Speaker, is the partner access line for moms. This is a, has been a pilot program and this legislation makes this a permanent program. It is a warm phone line for healthcare providers to call when they need help assessing and providing appropriate mental health and behavioral health treatments for moms while they're pregnant or postpartum. The need is immense. We know that this is a great uh, reach out and a, and a hand up in trying to provide equitable uh, behavioral health needs and services for all of our moms. Um, the call volume has tripled since 2019 and a survey results for, for all of those that have used the line shows that 97% of the providers are highly satisfied with their experience and um, really appreciate the ability to consult on co-occurring conditions for our moms. The second thing this line does is makes permanent the mental health referral assist line for our teens. This is where families can call in when they're trying to find the help for their teen, for their youth, for their child, for behavioral health. We know that resources are tight. We know they're short. We know that the various insurance programs have all kinds of criteria on it. And when you need help for your youth, you need it now. Being able to find a person, get an appointment, make that happen is nearly, um, is a huge struggle for our families. We've heard it time and time and time again. That's exactly what this referral assist line does. It too has been a pilot and it too um, needs to be made permanent. Just in generally speaking, there's over 1800 families that reach out in a fiscal year. And just since July to December, we've doubled that during the times of the pandemic. We know that uh, the health plans, because of, of legislation that we passed um, previously, will be supported both by Medicaid, but also by our commercial plans. This is good for our state, this is good for our families, and we have a good balanced uh, mechanism to pay for this line. The last thing that this legislation does is really move forward a, a piece of um, behavioral health work that we need to do for our youngest, our youngest, our zero to five age group. The Children Youth Behavioral Health work group has a subgroup that focuses completely on the prenatal to five ages. And this group, the prenatal to five has been working on this particular piece of, of, of legislation for many years. It does three things. We know that when you're looking and trying to assess what's happening with your little baby in your arms, why that baby won't make eye contact, why is the baby um, maybe um, a little bit behind in the milestones for growth and development. Um, why does my little baby react this way in this circumstance and not that way in this circumstance? And what is the concern? Generally speaking, the assessments to try to figure that out for our medical professionals is one, one assessment to try to define what's the next step and where we're going. What this legislation does is update the diagnostic codes to really move forward to what needs to be done for best practices for the zero to five age group and not use the diagnostic manual that's most commonly used for older children. It also allows the assessment period to go to three to five assessments so that we can understand exactly what's happening with that little one. And then the last thing that it does is making sure that those assessments can be done in natural environments. Your little baby is going to be different in your home, it's gonna be different in your childcare setting, it's gonna be different in the doctor's office. In order to really understand what's happening, we need to make sure that that child is in their, their comfortable setting and really understand where we're going. So with all of that, I greatly appreciate your support, Speaker, on moving this legislation forward, a top priority in making sure that 
our, our children, our youth, and our little babies have what they need for their behavioral health needs. Thank you.